Okay, this video is on piecewise functions. Now, most functions that we deal with are defined by just a single expression, a single formula. Like, for example, y equals x squared is a function. It's just defined by this one formula. y equals 3x plus 2 is a linear function. It's defined by this one expression. Well, piecewise functions are actually defined by different expressions or different formulas depending on which part of the domain you're talking about. So for example, here's a graph of kind of an odd looking uh, function and it looks like for this piece of it, it looks like a parabola, which is what it is. For this piece right here, this is y equals x squared. And yet over here, it just looks like a straight line. And in fact, that's what it is. So for this part of the function, it's defined as a parabola, y equals x squared. But from here over, where x equals 2 on over, it's defined as a straight line. In fact, it's defined as the line y equals negative x plus 6. So we've got these two different expressions defining this one function. That's called a piecewise function. So we might say, for example, that this function, y equals x squared for x that is less than or equal to 2, and we'll say the function continues on in this direction, and yet y is equal to negative x plus 6 when x is greater than 2. Now, one way that you often see piecewise functions uh, uh, define the notation that you see is something called bracket notation. And bracket notation looks something like this. So for this function right here, which is defined like this, we would write this in bracket notation like this. Y equals, and it's called bracket notation because that little bracket there. Y equals x squared, and then a comma, and then the domain where y is equal to x squared. So in this case, where x is less than or equal to 2. And then we'd say y equals negative x plus 6, comma, and then the domain where y is equal to negative x plus 6. So that's going to be where x is greater than 2. So this would be the bracket notation that defines this particular piecewise function. All right, let's take a look here at example, whoops. Let's take a look at example number one before we look at example number two. Example number one, the function g of x is defined as follows g of x equals x plus 1 for x less than or equal to 2, and g of x is equal to 1 for x greater than 2. And in the notes it says write g of x using bracket notation and then graph the function. Okay, so I want to write this using bracket notation. g of x is x plus 1 for x less than or equal to 2, so I'm going to write g of x equals x plus 1, comma, and then the domain for that part of the function, x less than or equal to 2. And then g of x equals 1, comma, and then that part of the domain, x greater than 2. All right, so here it is in bracket notation. Now I want to graph the function. So let's see, g of x equals x plus 1. This is a linear function, slope of 1, y-intercept of 1. So it's going to go through here, and it's going to have a slope of 1. So that part is going to look something like that. Now, that's only going to be for x less than or equal to 2, so that's only going to go up to right here. And then I'm going to have a different piece of the function. So from for x greater than 2, g of x is going to be equal to 1. Well, here's where 1 is. So from here out, I've just got a constant function. So this part of the graph is not going to be there. And the graph then kind of jumps down here, everywhere x is greater than 2. Now, one thing to note about this, this is a function. And right here at 2, you can see there's this big gap in the function. And so the question comes up, well, what's the value of the function when x is equal to 2? Is it equal to you know, this value up here on the graph, or is it equal to this value down here? Well, according to the way the function is defined, 
for x less than or equal to 2, the function is defined as x plus 1. So this point right here on the graph, which I'm going to make a, a filled in dot, just to make clear that on the graph, this is the value of the function when x equals 2. When, when x is greater than 2, the function is equal to 1. And so I'm going to put an open circle here just to indicate that for all values greater than 2, the function is equal to 1, but not for the value where x equals 2, because when x equals 2, it's defined as this piece of the function. All right, so you often see these uh, filled in dots or these open uh, circles, filled in circles or open circles on the graphs of piecewise functions. All right, example number two. This says the town of Garner's residential utility rates for water consumption are given as follows. 228 per CCF, and CCF stands for 100 cubic feet. So 228 per CCF for your first four uh, 100 cubic feet. Then you're charged $3.80 per 100, per 100 cubic feet for the next 5 to 10 CCF that you use. And then you're charged $5.07 per CCF for 11 or greater. So this is, what, this is what's called a tiered uh, rate model. So the less water you use, the less you pay for it, and the more you use, the more you pay for it. Okay, so what we want to do is express the function using bracket notation, and then graph the function. All right, so looks like we're going to have three lines in our function here. f of x is just equal to 228 when, let's see, it looks like when x is between 0 and 4, so let's write this like this, x greater than 0, less than 4, and I'm just going to write this as, you know, x greater than 0, x less than 4, and I'm not going to worry about the equal signs yet. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute, and we'll kind of fill in those details. So for now, 228 when x is between 0 and 4, the value of the function is 3.80 when x is between 5 and 10. And five dollars and seven cents when x is greater than eleven. Actually, this one says when it's eleven or greater. So this is going to be x greater than or equal to eleven. I'll go ahead and fill that one in. Okay, so let me go ahead and graph what I have here. So f of x is a constant, two twenty-eight, when x is between zero and four. Okay, so for, for between zero and four. 228, 1, 2, that's going to be about right here. So between 0 and 4, it's just this constant value. Between 5 and 10, it's a different constant value, 3.80. 1, 2, 3, so that's going to be about right here. Between 5 and 10, so 5, 6, 10. So between 5 and 10, it's got this value here, and then greater than 11, it's equal to 5.07, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's about right here, so greater than 11, or rather greater than or equal to 11, it's going to be like that. Okay, so there's kind of my preliminary graph of this piecewise function, but I got a couple of things that I noticed. One, I've got these gaps here in my graph, which I think I'm going to have to take care of because I suspect if somebody uses between four and five, uh, between four and five CCF of water, they're they're still going to be charged some amount. So I need to have that indicated on the graph. And there's another thing I noticed, which is that it looks like from my graph here that if I use no water at all, then I'm still paying some amount of water. And I'm going to say that's probably not the case. I suspect if I use zero water and I'm going to pay zero dollars. So I'm going to actually add this point in on my graph here. I'm going to say f of x equals zero when x equals zero. So I'm going to put this point in my, in my graph. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to have an open circle here to indicate that when x is greater than zero but less than four, I'm going to pay 228 per CCF. All right, now what about this gap here between four and five? So let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume, based on the information that I have, it says 380 for 
five between five and ten. So I'm going to say the amount of if I use between four and five, that I'm probably going to still be charged at this rate right here. So I'm going to say this is going to go all the way up to five, but as soon as it becomes five, this is going to be the rate I'm charged. So I'm going to put an open circle here on this piece of my graph, and I'm going to fill in the circle here. And so this needs to read x greater than zero, less than four. Now this needs to read x greater than zero, x less than five. And this one needs to read, I'm going to be charged 380 if x is greater than or equal to 5 and less than, and again, I'm going to say that I'm probably going to be charged at this middle rate for values between 10 and 11. So let me extend this line out here, and I'm going to put another open circle there. So let's see. If x is greater than or equal to 5 or less than not 10, but less than 11. So I'm going to say x is less than 11. And then for this one, I'm going to be charged at 507 for x greater than or equal to 11. And that's what I've got here. And I think this graph now matches my piecewise defined function here. Notice about this graph, notice that it is in fact a function. That is, it passes the vertical line test. Anywhere on my graph that I draw a vertical line, I'm only going to hit the graph in one place. Even if I draw my line, like right here at one of these breakpoints, if I draw a vertical line right here, notice it's only going to hit the graph at this one place where that solid circle is. It's not going to hit it at this point because that's an open circle. Same thing for this breakpoint over here. Same thing over here at zero. All right.